So whether it was this Basete Ibex or the Grados Ibex, you know, that level of excitement when you're almost to the animal, you know, your heart's still pumping, your adrenaline's still really high, and you're just super excited, you can't wait to get your hands on it. So how this trip came together was I've always wanted to go to Spain and start on the Ibex. I'm infatuated with the Ibex. I think they're the coolest looking animals. I guess the thing that excited me most about hunting Ibex in Spain was that my wife Julie uh, wanted to go and it was kind of her idea from the beginning. Uh, I'd have to say they're probably my favorite besides elk. I just wanted to kind of get started. I'd never been to Europe. I kind of wanted to, you know, get that experience of going somewhere really far away. And so I kind of talked Mike into it. He agreed and, and we made a trip of it. And unfortunately we couldn't bring Joey with us on this. For the most part it was actually getting to go on a hunting trip with just my wife and you know, hopefully go harvest some, some great Ibex in Spain and you know, see a different country. You know, hunting in the Grados area was almost you know, like seeing in the high timber in Nevada. I mean, it almost looked the same. Got into this hilly, curvy valley and then all of a sudden you see these mountains and it was like almost like being at home in in our state of Nevada. These tall mountains, a lot of sagebrush, a lot of pine trees and it was beautiful, just absolutely beautiful and we felt kind of like we were almost at home. The first day hunting, Nacho told us we were going to be meeting up with what they call the gamekeepers and um, I wasn't quite sure what to expect with that. You know, you actually had a gamekeeper, which is Spain's version of what our game wardens would be here in the States. And, you know, they're actually, you know, watching for poachers, taking care of the animals, plus their guides, and they go everywhere with you. That was different, but it was a cool experience. We drove into this national park where you get to hunt. It was just stunning, like jagged mountaintops, these beautiful trees. 
then we parked and we had to um, kind of do some test shooting to show the gamekeepers that we, you know, were legit. I'm we, not we sure what to think right now. <laughs> so we set up a target and shot. I think, you know, after that, they kind of had these looks like, all right, let's go. And that was it. It was one shot, each of us, and, and then we took off. We started hiking and it was hard because I was so excited to get going and, and I couldn't wait to see like an Ibex or, you know. But then the scenery also kind of takes you off guard too and so you're kind of walking around and you're tripping over things and you're looking around and you're in awe of stuff and you're trying to keep up with the gamekeepers and, you know, but it, all in all it was really exciting. First day hunting, we had hiked up. Uh, the gamekeepers had said they had seen like a really good one that we were after, and we never did end up seeing the one that they were talking about. As we were coming back down and heading back towards our, our vehicles at the end of this trail in this deep canyon, we spotted one, and at first they were all, you know, kind of arguing a little bit about, no, he's not the one, and we don't want to shoot this one. There is one, and maybe he's like, no, a bone, the thick tree, it is one there, right here, over there, yeah. and you cannot see it from here. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I get told, okay, if he comes out again, you need to shoot him. We uh, just stopped right there. Fortunately for me, there was a, a huge uh, rock right there that I could get set up on. So I set the rifle up in a great shooting position. It's 150 yards, he's just right in the middle. So I waited for him to kind of come out in between some trees and he came out and... Okay. Booyah! Well done. <laughs> Congrats. I like his gun. <laughs> <laughs> Very nicely done. Congratulations, Congrats. Dave. That's a great set. Good set. Good set. Uh, the first thing I heard was Mike hooping and hollering and all excited. And oh, yeah. well <laughs> it just makes me, you know, smile and laugh. And, and I was like, then I'm proud of myself. You know? <laughs> We had to kind of hike up to this ibex because where he was at. <laughs> wow! And just seeing like they got such a little body, but these huge horns. And sometimes you're thinking, how do they hold these horns up with these little bodies? But they're so cool looking, and they're they're beautiful animals. So I just got done, I got a great Ibex and we're having some downtime, having a little bit of lunch. I'm loving Spain, it's gorgeous here. And the people are the nicest people I've ever met. And super excited and happy about getting this 14 year old Ibex. And I couldn't be uh, more grateful. Day number two, uh, you know, the day before, uh, Julie harvested a, a giant Kratos Ibex. The gamekeepers have, had seen another Ibex that was same quality in that same area uh, before we got there. So we went back and spent most of the day in there, but never turned up the Ibex that they were looking for. So we backed out of there and the head gamekeeper, Carlos, said, hey, let's go check some different canyons. He took us to the top of this mountain and uh, we got out and set up the vortex and glass and glass. Right with about, I don't know, maybe two hours of light left, uh, our guide Nacho spotted a, 
Ibex down the canyon. After further review and everybody looking at it, they decided, you know, that this was a really big Ibex and we should go after it. So started down a canyon up the other side to see if we could get into position where this Ibex was. And we, we got into position and we had to wait for him to, to clear a big boulder to where I had a window to shoot. We got into position and we had to wait for him to, to clear a big boulder to where I had a window to shoot and he did and Say the rest is history and put a giant great Ibex on the ground. It was uh, it was a very exciting hunt for me because it was you know it was like you know your heart's pumping. You're you don't know whether it's going to work out or not, but that's the exciting part about hunting for me. Plan all comes together and it works out. It makes it even makes it even that much more special. We just smoked a giant. Great dose Ibex. We uh, kind of this little flat going into this bigger canyon, and uh, Scotty was right here, 100, 120 yards, and they were like, "This is the one! This is the one!" And they're all excited. It's a, it's a giant. So super excited. This Ibex that we ended up uh, harvesting uh, to the pack out. You know, to get back to the uh, get back to the trucks, we ended up doing a little over 14 miles that day. So it, it's all worth it in the end. So for me, I, I I'm thankful to be able to be a hunter and to have the opportunity to harvest any animal. You know, this great Osibex in Spain was just as super excited and happy to be there and happy to share the experience with my wife Julie and uh, Nacho and the gamekeepers and we were all hunters sharing a moment on the mountain. And it was, it was really cool. So going into the, the Seti area, there was a much different atmosphere there, uh, more deserty uh, terrain, but definitely cool in its own right. For me, anyway, it was more like the high deserts of Nevada, big rim rocks, big canyons. We're here in a different part of Spain today and almost across the country, going for the Bassetti Ibex. And uh, it's beautiful, sunny, but chilly. We've already seen a bunch of nice Ibex. And the first morning out, we spotted a giant uh, Ibex. The gamekeepers from that area, uh, who were a father and son, uh, they were very excited about this Ibex because they had seen it before, and they were, you know, really wanting to get a shot at it. So it was a very methodical planning out session on how we were going to go about making the stock on this ibex. You know, Ju Julie was going to have the opportunity to shoot this ibex. I don't know if we should rock paper scissors. I'm trying to be a gentleman, but it's if I should trip him and push him down the hill. For some reason, I guess she loves me. She said. Why don't you go ahead and take this one? She says, I know you're really excited about it. That was really cool, so thank you. There was no, no possible way for us to go at this Ibex from, from the bottom up. He had complete visual, you know, 360 degrees. We made a plan, we made a stock from this old road that took us on top of the mountain and we were trying to get above him so we could shoot down. When we finally got into position, we were 180 yards from this Ibex. Waited him out, waited for him to stand up and
you guys are looking to go to Spain, check out Nacho Area Spanish Hunt. Uh, we'll have all the information up for you. You can check out his website. He'll take care of you. Uh, he's a great hunter and a great guide. Check him out if you want to go to Spain and experience some Ibex hunting. Waited him out, waited for him to stand up and Made a good shot and put him down for my you know, second Ibex in Spain. It was you know, another amazing experience, another amazing moment. After the gamekeepers and Nacho were really super excited when we got to the animal on how big it was. I, I didn't know, I was just happy with, you know, I just harvested this amazing trophy and they were, they were freaking out on how big it was. So, so I guess in this certain part of the Basete area in Spain, this was the biggest ibex that had been shot there in a long, long time. So they, they were all excited about this going to be some kind of record. You know, at least I held the record for a day. Unbelievable. Amazing how big he's dead. Jeez. You know, so whether it was this Basete Ibex or the Grados Ibex, you know, that level of excitement when you're almost to the animal and you walk up on it and you see, see the horns or the antlers, you know, your heart's still pumping, your adrenaline's still really high and you're just super excited, you can't wait to get your hands on it. it. Looked like they were freaking out on how big this thing was, so that made it even more uh, special, I guess you would say. So we, we had a stock on this one Ibex and tried to set up and we just, they were on the move. He, it, the Ibex we were looking at just wouldn't stop moving. He was just <laughs> chasing the, the females all over, up and down and down canyons and up mountains and around and, and uh, we just never could get set up and get on him where he ever stopped for uh, long enough for me to take a shot at him and uh, ended up going back there in the afternoon and he was right in the same place this time he decided to take a nap so we had time to uh, hike down and then back up and onto this uh, ledge to get into a shooting position uh, where i could take a shot at him um, I had to stay there the entire time while this Ibex is, you know, bedded down taking a nap. And it was about 45, 50 minutes before he finally stood up and I got to take my shot at him. Vale, vale. Yep. Again, a clean through the heart, lungs, one shot and very happy. So when we came up on the Ibex and I was admiring him and smiling ear to ear and so much bigger than I was expecting. I just had to chuckle because Nacho was like so animated and jumping around and so excited and it was one of the biggest Ibex he's seen in that Vesetti area. and he ended up being bigger than Mike's Ibex. Uh, first time ever for me. <laughs> to see his joyfulness at, you know, harvesting this great Ibex and the fact that it, you know, it was this really nice, mature Ibex. It was pretty exciting. To You know, the whole, the whole experience of, on this trip was 
not only the hunting and, and the cool mountains and uh, scenery that we got to hunt, it was the places that we got to see and experience while we were there because of Nacho. One of the cool things we got to do while we were in Spain was do some sightseeing. And one of the towns was Avila. It's a walled city and it has this old cathedral in there. Really neat to kind of go in there and look around at that. Welcome to the Holy Apostolic Cathedral Church of El Salvador of Avila. Another really cool place was Catharis. I guess it's where they filmed a little bit of Game of Thrones. And we also saw very cool castles and it was neat to see that history and, and see people living in these places. Went to some cool restaurants, had some really good food, some really good wine, you know, enjoyed each other's company. Um, so it was an all around ex experience, just being able to enjoy the trip with my wife.